it's Ashley, and I'm here with Rachel. We're at Brookline Booksmith, and we are getting ready for the Susan Dennard and V.E. Schwab book signing. I'm so excited. I'm also still behind. I've only read one of the five books here today. I read, I've read a bunch of V.E. Schwab. But you're right, I've only read the first book to uh, that Darker Sheet of Magic series, yeah. and I haven't read any of Susan Jenner. I've only heard yeah. good things. I'm like, I'm gonna assume yeah. that I'm gonna like this. Everybody talks about Truth Witch. Yeah. And now Wind Witch, but I have not read them at all, and I've only read the first one in Shades of London series, so hopefully there's not a whole lot of spoilers tonight. I, oh, I didn't even think of that. I thought about it. I've been thinking about it all day and preparing myself and Aww. hoping. something else why are you a writer <laughs> just for me yeah. just like literally just for me <laughs> like Suze you're fine like go ahead like do you're, your thing you're me you can answer it too if you want to. I was thinking we're gonna yes. both gonna answer that one because yeah, yeah. um I don't I so growing up I wanted to be a, I wanted to be an interrogator <laughs> like like legitimately well I mean I wanted to be Sydney Bristow from Alias but barring that I wanted to be an interrogator and in some ways, writing is kind of like not super far from that. I actually went to school originally for astrophysics. Wow. Um, changed my major six times. And over the course of changing it so many times, realized that what I actually loved was the narrative. I loved learning about a subject and then moving on because the course catalog was like 300 pages long. Wow. How could I possibly study one thing? And that actually was one of my first indicators I was going to be a writer. Because the cool thing about writing is that you get to become an expert in something and dive into a world and a life for a short period of time. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. so also I'm just like not very good at anything else and I can't imagine having like a normal job. Exactly. I have like yeah. failed out of every normal job I have ever tried from like the bra department at Macy's through yeah. independent book selling, which I couldn't do because I never made a dime. I, I would say I feel bad for you, but I think you really worked out with writing. Yeah, my, my dad, up through, up through like eight books, my dad didn't want me to ever get a tattoo because he's like, it might affect your ability to get a job. And I was like, dad, I've had a job for five years. Are you serious? So, how about you, Susan? Because you had marine biology. Yeah, well, first I want to know, have you always written, though? Like, did, or did you start yeah. writing? Um, I started telling stories when I was quite young. The first story I ever finished, I was eight, and I wrote a story, this is so indicative, about the angel of life and the angel of death who were brothers, and then the angel of death got super jealous because everyone loved the angel of life, and so he murdered the angel of life, and then the world ended because there was no life. And I was, and I was eight, so I knew I was going to tell stories, but I didn't know what shape the stories were going to take until I was in college. I can tell you the shape. <laughs> Um, so, what was the question Yeah, why, how did, why are you doing this? Why, why are you a writer, basically? Why are you why? wasting your time? Um, why, Suze? Get out of it now while you can. Um, I am a writer for lots of reasons. I always told stories, too, mm -hmm. and uh, daydream constantly. Never stop daydreaming. And the, the struggle for me is actually the writing part. Like, really? I want you guys to know the stories. I wish you could just pull them out of my head and we'd be done with it. Because yeah. <laughs> um, the actual articulating of words is like the part where I struggle the most. And I don't know if it's if it's the scientist in me, but uh, that's the hardest part for me. Are you? I'm curious. Do you find yeah. writing easier or revising? I like having written. Yeah, that's exactly. my favorite part. Me too. Um, no, I Same. like the part before I start and after I finish. And that sounds super <laughs> flippant, but what it is is in to put it in scientific terms, it's the difference between potential and kinetic energy. Like one yeah. before you start, everything is potential. You can't go wrong. And then there's this giant gap. And I think Holly Black talks about it: the gap between the story in your head and then what you put on page. And that first draft draft is the farthest from you that the story will ever be and then you spend revising stitching it closer That's to the idea wanted, yeah. so because of that the more books I've written the more I hate first drafts because I the the side like the in, the an analytical part of me cannot handle how flawed it is exactly. oh no I'm the same and I 
writing is very hard for me because all I can see is how bad it is. Um, And I I like problem solving. That's where my strength is. Um, It's what I was good at in science, too, is coming up with solutions on the fly. So I can revise because it's like, oh, this is a puzzle, and now I must assemble it into the story that I intended for it to be all along. But the actual writing is awful. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have realized too that I, I call myself lately, this sounds so pretentious and I'm sorry, but I call myself a storyteller instead of a writer because I don't know that this will always be the only medium in which I share stories and I don't really care what the medium is. I really just want you to know what this story is so you have it and you can geek out about it with me and be like, yeah, that is super cool. <laughs> and then we will be done. Yeah. Um, do you retcon your pro- So I do a thing where like once I'm done, I totally revise in my head how miserable the writing part was. It's like having children. I yeah. You forget how all the pain of childbirth, or else yeah. you would never do it again. Um, which there is evolutionary reasons for that, and science that you really do. It, your body really does like sort of erase all the pain, so you don't remember, and you'll continue yeah. to breed. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, totally. It's amazing. You just like everyone. The pain. I keep talking about how like what a joy Conjuring of Light was, and how like much I've loved this book and this process. And literally everyone I've worked with just looks at me with horror on their face because it's it's usually in contrast so like right now I'm working on Our Dark Duet which is a sequel to The Savage Song and I keep wanting to burn it down and I'm like why can't it be like Conjuring Conjuring was a beautiful beautiful like heavenly creature and my editor's like I have six straight months of emails from you asking to like return the money like like, can we just not end it and I have no memory whatsoever of how bad it was so we're like very good at retconning our own like our own journeys creatively and I'm grateful for that because the moment I finish it then I want to do it again. And then as soon as I start doing it again, I'm like, why, did, why am I doing this? I want to move to Iceland and raise goats. <laughs> but I want to pause. The writer in me is like, what? You write the end first? I so my, the, I think that's amazing. <laughs> so do you write it in with a series? Would you have written this end or just the end of the book first? So before I started A Darker Shade of Magic, I knew exactly how A Darker Shade of Magic ended, and I knew exactly how Conjuring of Light ended. So did you work backwards from A Conjuring of Light too? Yeah. Oh my gosh, we have to talk later. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I love craft and I will talk right? about nothing else and I love hearing other people's methods because you never know what might work for you that you never thought of yeah. um, and or it just is so different from you but it's amazing. I love hearing other writers because like every writer is mad in their own little way <laughs> like everyone's just a tiny you have to be a tiny bit crazy and so like what works for me like I write I'm so bad this is the thing where like this is the do as I say not as I do I write my scenes out of order do down to the too. sentence level. I actually do this right? too. See? I do this too. That's why I'm so intrigued it's, okay, by we have to talk later. first because I'm like, later. maybe this would work for <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. No, I like write my sentences and I treat them like puzzle pieces and then me I then too. assemble them into a scene. Oh my god, right? I've never met anyone this else amazing. amazing. I always thought I was crazy. I did too. I'm so happy. <laughs> I was just kind of wondering between you both, one of you is initials, at least on this series. One of you is your full name. How did you go about thinking about that whenever you started thinking about that? Do you want to go first? I made a huge mistake. (laughs) (laughs) I kept my name and I shouldn't have. Like, I really wish I'd used a pseudonym now. Just because, like, you get... It's weird when your real life crosses over with this life. So, like, someone in my real life, like, my doctor will be like, I looked you up online and read your book. And I'm like, no, you're not supposed to know about that. And so I, like, wish I hadn't done that. So there you go. There you go. Uh, I, I, and I, my name is not pronounceable. Like, no one ever says it right, which is fine. I say Dennard, but most people say Denard, which is probably the correct way to say it. But my family's from Redneck, Georgia, so we turned it into Dennard. And so... I, I, it's like just one of those, like, it's not like that annoying, but I just wish I'd gone something easy. Like, my middle name is Towers, I should have just been Susan Towers. Although, for the record, for a laugh, guys, my initials are STD. (laughs) Everybody laugh. I got it sewn on my backpack in junior high. That's how I figured out what they were. I went to school, and my nickname became Herpes. And when I say nickname, I mean the bullies. So, yeah. I never lived it down. It was the worst day of my life. (laughs) Anyway, so don't use the initials STD as your writing name. Pro tip. I have two names. So I'm Victoria on my Kidlet and YA, and I'm a VE on my adult novels. And the reason is super fun. 
The reason is that adult genre is super sexist. <laughs> And the number of fans, like fans of my series, specifically female fans, who tell me, I love it when this happens, if you're thinking this, please don't tell me, who tell me that they never would have picked up my book if they'd known I was a woman. Oh. It's, it's a lot. Um, sexism is a really, really big issue in, in, adult, in adult fantasy. And so I would rather someone pick up my book and read it and like it and then have to deal with my gender <laughs> than to never pick up my book because it said Victoria on the cover. So yeah, I'm VE. I actually kind of wish all my stuff was VE though. I like having a short name. My real name is Victoria Elizabeth. It is a lot of syllables, a lot of syllables. And so I, I love it actually. I wanted to go with something simpler because no one can pronounce Schwab, but my father threw an absolute connection. I'm an only <laughs> child and like he, and he, this is like a man who has total chill most of the time. And when I said that I wanted to change my name, on the book covers to something like had it been a pseudonym I think he'd be fine but like to just change my last name no <laughs> no so it's fine I'm cool with people mispronouncing it but yeah I it's like not a super cool reason to have to do something and my my editor is very like f the patriarchy like you should have it on the cover but I again I would rather take down patriarchy from the inside out and so if it means that I convert readers and then they have to kind of deal with their feelings towards things then that's fine with me. Studied in Edinburgh and yeah. you're writing books and editing books. How? That's how a big question. I got into a conversation with my agent today for about an hour and a half around the question of how. Oh. Um, <laughs> because I've got, I have a minimum of three books out in 2019. Whoa. And um, that I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on a graphic novel and I'm working on comics. And I'm highly involved in the screenwriting side of like my book's adaptations. And I, I write a lot. Um, I'm actually quite a slow writer, but I am a consistent writer. I believe in keeping the door propped open every single day. I can only write one book at a time, but I can also plan a book at the same time, and I can edit a book at the same time. So I budget it pretty strictly. I don't take days off. Yeah, I've seen your calendar. Yeah, yeah. It's a 365-day-a-year job. Like, I just... It, I'm, I would rather... This is a, a philosophy that is getting me in trouble... I would rather be overwhelmed than underworked. And, um, and I, yeah. I was at a point a couple years ago in my career where I was very, very afraid I would never work again. And so I said yes to a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I'm still saying yes. I've, I, I had to say no for the first time today to something very difficult. Uh, and saying no is very scary as a creative person, but I love it. Like I love being busy. Um, ask me that when I'm laying on the floor and it's two in the morning and I'm crying and I probably would say no, but like, I'm just happy that way. It's just my jam. I, if I'm not busy enough, I get nothing done. I've learned that my, for me creatively, I need a lot of incubation time for ideas. And so Same. I rushed this. I, I wasn't ready to be written. Once I had given it enough incubation time, it did burst forth and come out and I was able to assemble it like a puzzle and it was what I wanted it to be, but it took a year and a half to get there I have wasted words because I can't sit still and so I'm not going to not work all day but then it was all getting thrown away and now I know I know that like I can't just dive right into a story it needs time to sit um before it's going to be there well, that idea of incubation is super super important because like I have a very long incubation window so I have what I call just like a stove metaphor but I have a back burner and I keep all of the ideas on that back burner, and like I, I add ingredients little by little, and I let them steep until they're ready. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I didn't do. Yeah, and I know that now. I know. That I only did it with the first one. Like, right? So the rest was written. Like, this is the reason every other book is late because this is a beast, right? Um, no, but I. So on the whole, the, one of the reasons I'm writing so much is because I get ideas and I put them onto the stove about a year before I know I'm going to have time to write them. So that way when they come up for writing, I've had time with them and I've processed them. That's the only way that I can, when I sit down, write quickly. It just became signing time. And now... We wait. Rachel is downloading games so that we can play. Yeah, we're going to play heads up. Because this, this is the situation that's happening right now. And there's, there's no line. Order. No order. At least when I did, um, like, uh, I did 
something like this with Santa Clara and Jody Pitu and at least just given a number and it's waiting, but at least I knew when I was going to see it. This uh, chaos. So we've just decided that we're going to sit here and wait and we'll just be the last people. Yeah, I'm which will be cool because it's currently 8.20. Update. We've been waiting in the chairs now for an hour right. and five minutes. It's 9.25. The line, you can finally see the end. But then... There's Susan Banner! This would be me as an author. Is I'm tired of sitting at a table. I'm just going to walk the line and sign the books. Because I can. And it's my signing. It's almost my turn. I like three people in front of me. I've got all these books. And it's, it's ten something at night. I don't know. My watch is over there. But we've been waiting for about two hours in the chairs. I have to work at 7 a.m. <laughs> but I'm almost up there. That feeling when you get home from a book event two hours later than you expected to, it's not my favorite feeling. I just wanted to do a little wrap up here. I had a great time. It was fantastic. I'm going to just shut off my lights and stuff while I'm talking to you. Um... It was really fun. I'm really glad I went. I'm really glad Rachel could go with me because it always is more fun when you have people with you than when you're going by yourself to an event, um, especially because we had to wait so long at the end. I mean, granted, if I was by myself, I would have just like pushed my way through and not waited two hours for everybody to go through the line to get my own book signed. But yeah, this is my one complaint. Okay. Brookline Booksmith, you did a great job. I love your bookstore. However, you need to work on the on the system because it didn't seem like there was even a system about signing. It was basically, okay, now's the signing portion and it was a mob to get to the table and it was just chaos. So that's why Rachel and I were just like, we're just gonna chill right here in these chairs until everybody else is done and then we will go forth. And it worked out nice. It was nice kind of not feeling the pressure to rush because other people are behind you. I mean, we felt a little bit rushed just because like, dude, it's 1030 at night and we all want to go home or hotels in the case of our writers. But it was really cool. Like I said, I didn't read any of Susan Dennard's books, but now I'm really excited to based on listening to her talk and everything. Um, she just seems like a really cool person and I can't wait to read her books. The e Schwab was wonderful too so now I need to get back to her books. Words. It's midnight. It's after midnight and I have to be at work in less than seven hours. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Oh I almost just tipped over because I'm so tired. Um, so let's wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you know of any other signings in the Boston area anytime, let me know because it's possible that I miss some. Also, let me know who your favorite authors to meet or to go to their talks and signings is. Susan and Victoria were like my favorites. I mean, granted, I haven't been to a lot, but I really liked how they just totally played off each other with everything that was said. There was like no dead time, no dead air, no downtime, no like awkward silence moments. They just kind of like, there was a question and one answered and then the other had a story and then it just like, it just flowed so nice and it was so wonderful and like, then all of a sudden it was over and I really enjoyed that. So let me know who your favorite authors to see in real life are and I will talk to you later. Bye.